it can be tough to revisit some of the 80s and 90s action films today. They often come across as cheesy or out of touch, much like my experimental solo album, Pump Up the Atom. Today I'm going to talk about a few that still hold up on this episode of Lethal Weapons. That's a working title. Welcome to the party, pal! Van Damme, Stallone, Schwarzenegger, and Willis all prove to me that you can overcome any obstacle as long as you can bench over 300 pounds and have a one-liner for every occasion. Not every movie following that formula comes out a winner, with some flicks being laughably bad. So bad that they become quite enjoyable. Here's my top five best awful films from the 80s and 90s. Number five is Escape from L.A. Kurt Russell reprises his role as Snake Plissken in a So Bad It's Good sequel to Escape from New York. The writing team was smoking a little bit of everything when coming up with the scenarios for our protagonist. The final scene is truly badass, and the score is downright good. You got a problem with that? Double Team was the combo no one was waiting for. The muscles from Brussels and the worm himself, Dennis Rodman, play ball in this slam dunk of a disaster. It goes all in on the basketball lingo, even though Rodman's character has nothing to do with the sport. It's a personal foul all the way through. Offense gets the glory. But defense wins the game. Sexy, steamy, hot, wild. These are all adjectives never to be used when describing barbed wire. Baywatch's gift to 15-year-old boys everywhere, Pamela Anderson, makes her big screen debut as a leather-clad heroine. She's packing her two huge signature weapons and also brandishes some guns. I do believe I'm falling in love. Get in line. There are too many awful video game adaptations to count, but Street Fighter is in a league of its own. Jean-Claude is back in his 2,362nd film, playing Guile, the eighth most popular street fighting character. Almost all the favorites from the game eventually show up in embarrassing fashion. This is worth watching just to see how much fun Raul Julia is having playing M. Bison in the cheesiest manner possible. Game over! Mortal Kombat Annihilation is a train wreck that follows a couple years after the surprisingly good first film. Most of the cast has been replaced, the effects are some of the worst I've ever seen, and the plot is more complicated than my fourth studio album. It's complicated. With a K. It's rare when a sequel lives up to the original, especially when directors change hands. James Cameron not only crafts an amazing second act to the franchise, but makes it his own here by focusing on the Marine versus Xenomorph aspect. Unfortunately, it wasn't game over for this franchise and Aliens 3 was made. It's game over, man. It's game over. My number four slot goes to Predator. What starts as your typical bro shooter, complete with shimmering muscle arm lock, quickly turns into an edge of your seat, man versus alien battle for survival. The final 30 minutes is incredible stuff, with the prey becoming the hunter. Get to the chopper! The Terminator is an incredible action thriller, but T2 Judgment Day ups the stakes for me by bringing in a new type of threat, the T-1000. The twist of making Arnold's machine a good robot this time was a clever idea, and the liquid metal foe gave 10-year-old Adam a few nightmares. It also doubles as a good warning to those that choose to drink milk straight from the carton. That's horrific stuff. The Matrix just makes the cut, coming out in 1999. The Wachowski-directed sci-fi action vehicle is smart, stylish, and features a computer avatar leaping buildings and dodging bullets. Trinity! Help! Nine's Die Hard had a very simple premise. Nakatomi Plaza is held hostage by Hans Gruber and his team while they attempt to open a safe containing 640 million in negotiable bearer bonds. Fortunately for the Christmas party, New York cop John McClane happens to be at the wrong place at the right time. Happy trails, Hans. Before Charlize Theron was kicking butt as a super spy in Atomic Blonde, there was Gina Davis in The Long Kiss Goodnight. Die Hard 2 director Rennie Harlan teams Davis and Jackson up in this somewhat unconventional action flick, 
featuring deer neck snapping, hardcore waterboarding, and Samuel L. Jackson being angry and swearing a lot. Okay, so not all things are in common here. With a lot of gunplay, excessive explosions, and witty dialogue, this is one long kiss you'll surely remember. I give it five out of five buckheads. There are so many amazing action movies from the 80s and 90s, this short film doesn't even scratch the surface. The Lethal Weapon franchise, the Indiana Jones trilogy, stops at three for me. Rambo, Robocop, a string of Jackie Chan films, The Last Boy Scout, and so many more. These will be covered in later episodes of this show, I'm sure, but let's see what else the kids have to say on Twitter. Tony Roosevelt goes all in with the Martin Lawrence-Will Smith combo in Bad Boys. Jamie Chadwick picks a deeper Melanie Griffith-Michael Keaton cut. Pacific Heights. Thanks for watching The Last Action Heroes. It's a working title. Brought to you by Guru Hub. Now I'd like to end with a classic Arnold Schwarzenegger line from Terminator. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. Oh, for f sake, that's the line we're going with. That's the one we're ending on. Not I'll be back.